The homeland they left behind has been torn apart by civil war, and ISIS is annihilating their cultural heritage. Whatever's not destroyed is being sold on a thriving black market, which CBS News infiltrated over the course of a six-month investigation. Here's Clarissa Ward. Sacred monasteries destroyed, ancient temples leveled by explosives. But perhaps the greatest threat to Syria and Iraq's cultural heritage is what you don't see, the illegal trafficking of precious antiquities. To get a first-hand look at this underground world, our producer posed as a buyer and made contact through social media with Omar, a Syrian living in Turkey who offers looted Syrian artifacts to international buyers. He claimed he had mosaics that were freshly dug out of the ground. These he could sell for $60,000, he wrote. We met in Istanbul and recorded our meeting on hidden cameras. They were the ones who ripped it out. We asked archaeologist Amar al-Azam to come with us to authenticate the piece. Yeah. Two nervous young Syrians took us to a rundown apartment on the outskirts of town and showed us this. Beautiful. A nearly 2,000-year-old Roman mosaic, and as we learned later, potentially worth $100,000. It was in Syria. Mm. They recently brought it out. We were told they dug it out of the ancient city of Apamea, one of Syria's most significant archaeological sites, seen in satellite photos in 2011, now pockmarked with the robber holes of looters. We moved to our van, where the smugglers also offered us Roman glass stolen from a tomb. The negotiating began. I need a rough price. I need a ballpark figure. $200,000 for the mosaic, they said, but that quickly dropped to 60000 They were eager to get the illegal piece off their hands. What's your reaction when you see a beautiful mosaic like this that's been looted from a precious site like Apollo? Well, obviously sadness, because these eventually will be bought by someone and they'll be lost to us forever. The main beneficiary is ISIS, which makes tens of millions of dollars on the thriving black market. The group issues permits to looters and takes a cut of the profits. For every antiquity they destroy on camera, thousands line their coffers through the illegal trade in antiquities. Colonel Matthew Bogdanos led the investigation into the looting of the Iraq National Museum in 2003. Now he prosecutes antiquities cases as an assistant district attorney. So who is buying these antiquities? Oh, who is giving them the money? It is a cozy cabal of academics, art historians, dealers, gallery owners, auction houses, museums, and private collectors. So some of these antiquities are ending up here in the U.S.? Certainly. Absolutely.
that is up to share and that you take pieces down from buying the biggest deal on the floor to make it come to where you can give us something to take from the back of the year in this sector. Basically, it's a government announcement with an announcement to the sector that we can make. I talk about our architects, I talk about my work for architecture, but I can say the secret is a solid one in the professional way of solid one that's also about more on this side projects to know from how to improve it better. We're a public institution, so we can't do this in here. Fighting with the traffic stars, it's taking a phone to public square. We're doing this by programming closely and very visibly with the raw material, especially when it comes to projects that go in public. We have to expect to know extra distance policy is the announcement by announcing a call that seems so easy. If we get something in the mail, we hand it over to the public hand back to the department. We hand it over to the adoption of the government officials. Our experts reports are only prepared for government and law enforcement authorities, not for the executive director of the Jewish Comprehensive Government District corresponding to the Secretary of the Security Administration. But this is not enough, obviously. Security Council Resolution 2199 reminded us of the urgency to prevent the spread of entire state conflict by police to find visits in the police district courses. But how do we do that? We don't have the numbers, we don't understand the demographics of the Ukraine, we don't understand how the network functions. This is why we have initiated and designed a national research project that is called Peripheral, and that is supposed to carry out innovative research on the combined academic and non-academic expertise of our teaching sites, sociologists, law enforcement agents, IT specialists, and ancient study specialists like myself. The main task of the group is, is a systematic analysis of the illicit trafficking of the last two projects in Iraq and Syria, and our associated partners, uh, who are very important for this project, are the National Archives and the Federal Foreign Office and Illicit buildings, um, illicit buildings are identifying or developing technological methods for an in-depth analysis of illicit traffic in cultural poverty in Germany. We're focusing on object type, turnover, network, and placement. We're trying to assess the potential of the domination of money laundering and terrorist crimes in Eastern Germany, and we're preparing a best practice guide for all pertinent stakeholders and are creating a digital content repository um, that is to be accessed with mobile devices by public and law enforcement officials. Preventing illicit traffic is and in all situations related and the regular supplies that are made possible by the Department of State are very important tools in this context because they address both issues. Um, it's been very important for us to cooperate with ICAN in the 2016 update of the head emergency letter of the Russian Council Project. And this group provided many prominent objects and academic uh, expertise in addition to the recovery system of Russia. And we're also assisting in the translation and the production of the first version of the report in German. We're proud partners of the National Arab Campaign that has been incredibly successful and we're strengthening our partnership that we have built through the production of information, promotional material, and communication by experts and expertise and data. All these are important measures, but it's clear that the protection of the archaeological heritage of Iraq and Syria starts in Iraq and in Syria, which is the age-wide capacity building that's so important. We have a very successful track record of cooperating with Ukrainian experts from Iraq and Syria, thereby establishing good neighbors and interpersonal um, expertise. We've also learned from this experience that in the case of Iraq and Syria, we need a more systematic approach, an approach that also involves the political and the administrative level. So together with the Ukrainian delegation to Iraq to yesterday, initiated the work hammered on the Iraqi Building Expert Dialogue on Iraq Cultural Heritage and Archaeological Sites in Germany. It's a high-level bilateral expert panel, but it is designed to coordinate with the large state capacity building program in Iraq and Germany that is trying to establish the framework, the 
things that could be used as swords that aren't more of the clumsy of the time. Once found, Christ can be more easily identified in those other categories of arsenal to artifacts. And they are called a probably highly valued artifacts. Even so, hard actual evidence for homes have become stronger in the last few years because of technology and also the development of um, what it is that you can call it like itself. Um, despite the absence of hard evidence, it is possible to observe trends in the current Islamic marketplace that would paint against the backdrop of earlier new Islamic scholarship indicate a strong probability that a significant amount of certain types of homes on today's home market likely exist in the Islamic Syria. Something that also emphasizes um, that homes coming to exist and that are coming to be built in the United States are largely unaware of. But, and this is the point I want to stress, these observations can only be applied to a specific collection of ancient homes, whose many other soil types circulated in Syria, but they circulated at the same time elsewhere as well, so that you can see from the archaeological items that you could just see the homes. Um, so offline, you can look at this paper that I put as some particular cases. I will highlight only one of them, um, but there are some other cases, and in particular, there are homes that were actually produced in uh, Western Turkey, which circulate exclusively in Syria, which is the true Syria, which is something that's not very known. But I just for this presentation here, the point of Zenobia, uh, she's a student of Kamala and her son, is to make a point. Antioch, which is a few months at 270 feet from Mars today, which is known to circulate largely in Syria, perhaps a little bit in Lebanon and Israel. This coin was actually so rare that after 1970, scholars thought that maybe a known type was modern counterfeit. From 1980 to 2009, um, about two or three of these coins entered the market with very valuable coins. And they end at per year, which is 13 per year. In 2014, and this data comes from um, rel relatively easily uh, accessible coin archive data, seven such coins were mint. And in the first eight months of this year, so far, seven coins have been or are being offered to sale. This dramatic increase is likely to be connected to the conflict in Syria. And so in the interest of time, I will not go through the other cases, but you can look at them uh, online. So now as coins are collected according to the years, uh, so you can see here what I find in the years of coins coming from Syria, or indeed from any other country here. And here's a first tour of Egypt, and you can come to see how um, increasingly these collectors of coins, ancient coins come from somewhere. And this might seem obvious after looking in a museum, but it's not always sort of understandable. So must therefore inquire whether the coins in question entered the U.S. through the U.S. If in doubt, we ask for paperwork. And you also, this is an important point, by all conveyance to the person who knows. Second, in cases where a serious interaction already is possible or likely, the rule is simple. We will not buy anything that does not have a well documented provenance. I think it's a four nine six seven rule, but just as kind of a uh, European if it is not possible, we require a solemn to document provenance for at least ten years after the sale. In practice it doesn't usually require but if you just keep coins in one year and then sell it, that, that comes to the rule. If no provenance is available, we fear the worst, the probability is that I'm speaking to myself here that such a coin without a provenance on the market has an old provenance is extremely slim. Um, third, we research provenance in detail, and here just the result of a recent review. Um, we also look at the age of the records that might be mentioned. Um, not all county catalog references are correct, and they could be looked for earlier, clearly verifiable photos with weight and other information taller than the object. Over the last few years, especially, the Islam American Islamic Society has rejected theories that originated from online sources, which have no permanent record of their sales or limited information about sellers. Or to put this simply, eBay is not a source of statement to be reliable, and we do not accept such theories as a bias. The most important part of the acquisition process is to review a publication of all new objects in the online database. And here the American Islamic Society's database, MAMPIS, has been a leader in the field. Um, the first to 
as he takes the one to step into the presence of God on the back of the other of heaven. And all his attributes are photographed and described. And the star continues to put his attributes on man with his movements. So, if he decides to receive copies of claims of ownership to the spirit in this world, can the star investigate the distinction when an item of unlawfully acquired exclusively is offered? He seeks to absorb such matters with an ethical and legal, legal manner. His rules, um, by the way, is something he also applies our collective and imaginary plans to track to this effective to decide to come in a secret way and collect it out of a large part of what he knows and can not tell us about it. You know, it's not that we get to that point in this way. So, last but not least, um, the society's church board staff is committed to taking a more active role in raising awareness about the disruption of natural heritage in other countries and the impact of the looting of the traditions, including coins, on civil wars and human suffering. While it's impossible to undo the damage that has been done by looting and others, we seek to create a collective media, archaeologists, legislators, and law enforcement officials in the dialogue to help create an academic discipline and a hobby for curious coin collectors and for people undertaking in the 21st century. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. This question might be a little bit hard to think this through, but for, for the, the, the kind of coin this is about um, that you're describing as being curious and hard, the problem is what the different cultures mean when they sit
priests that have ever made to the United States, it's the date of the execution of the MOU, and for all other countries, it's the year 2000. Based on the dates we use, we believe it is unlikely that needed items from Iraq and Syria due to recent conflict will end up in our facilities.
now. I doubt we will. But we're going to try damn hard to make sure that these items stay as far away from our territory and this market site as possible. So what are our suggestions for collecting? The first suggestion we have is that you document your collection. The easy way to do that is to have an entry. That's your starting point, but it is far from your ending point. There are other items to look for. Family pictures in which the item is included can help date the time that the object went out of the country of origin. Um, obituary notices regarding the collector can put an end date as to when the object was in the collector's possession. Uh, and there are a number of other different sorts of, of, of items that collectors can think of
specific and specific Surface, a very complex subject, but 